everybody, football fans, Dolphin fans all over, and of course, SUNY University at Buffalo, graduates, football alum, fans from all over Western New York. We got a big one. Jason Sarney here from FinManiacs.com. And we're going to start off our scouting series with one of the top running backs in the nation, number 26, University of Buffalo running back, Jared Patterson. How are you, Jared? I'm good. Th thanks for having me. Of course, of course. And you are coming off of a Heisman candidacy year. You are a premier player in the MAC conference. And if you could just tell me a little bit about what this season meant, because there was a little bit of speculation if there was going to be football with everything going on. And at one point, I believe that there was there was not going to be football going on in the MAC. So what did the season mean to you before getting on the field and obviously what you were able to put together in between the sidelines this season? Yeah, it was a, a great season. You know, a lot of ups and downs, you know. A lot of unknown factors, you know, whether, you know, we were going to play or not. You know, because Matt, the Matt Conference was one of the, you know, the first conference, you know, to cancel, you know, due to COVID. And, you know, and that 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 was definitely heartbreaking, you know, to to our team and obviously to the whole Mac. Uh, just like the other uh, Power Five conferences that was voicing their opinions from, you know, their leaders that was going to have a season. And, you know, and, and we made the best of, you know, of the six games, you know, like uh like I told my team and, you know, uh and just, you know, the coaches, know, uh, we had a great season, but we, we didn't finish it, finish it the way we wanted to. But, you know, I just hope we made, you know, Buffalo fans proud, you know, that we can play those six games and, you know, to represent our university. And speaking of representing the university and, you know, I tell – a lot of people who listen to the shows here, who follow the content, you know, I am a proud university at Buffalo graduate. And, you know, as we spoke about briefly, and just to show us all fans, graduates, and even those who might not know the history of Buffalo football in Division One, I'm not that old, Jarrett. Uh, I'm just 40, you know, but 20 years ago while I was at the University of Buffalo, I covered the first ever Division I win that the program had following a couple of winless seasons. It was against the University of Connecticut. I'll never, ever forget being in the booth that night about – a hundred people stormed the field, Jarrett, that night. A hundred people, if you can kind of put that into perspective. And now here you are pulling moves against Kent State and becoming the second highest totaled rusher in an individual game. Could you take us back to that Kent State game? 409 rushing yards was the second most total in Division One history. You had eight touchdowns this tied for the single game lead. Bring us back to that moment, and you must have been feeling good that day. Yeah, that was a, you know, both teams were undefeated, you know, early Mac East, you know, uh, matchup, you know, Kent State was a high scoring offense, you know, they were clicking on all cylinders and we knew we had to, you know, go for go, you know, tick for tack, you know, with those guys and, you know, having a great offensive line, you know, uh, really helps, you know, really helps my job, you know, become, become easy, you know, to an extent, you know, and, and, you know, that was just amazing and a uh, historical, you know, day for, you know, the whole team, not not just myself, but the whole team and just the whole university. Like 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 I always said, you know, it, this definitely was an honor, you know, and I just hope to put, you know, University of Buffalo on the map. It is firmly on the map. And when you really go back to the history, you know, the defensive side of the ball had a Khalil Mack some years back. And he, you know, obviously terrific linebacker, defensive end, you know, in the NFL. And you are now coming in as the offensive staple, the marquee, bull so to speak and did it to just to, to stay one more second on that Kent State game was there any campaigning to get like one or two more carries to get that top number one title in either scoring or rushing yards or were you content with number two and tied for first with touchdowns yeah uh, I didn't even know you know my you know when, when you're in in the zone and you know on the field you know you don't really worry too much about those things you know I didn't really know you know I, my mindset is you know we I, we just wanted to win, you know, because uh, last year we kind of, you know, uh, I guess let our foot off the gas. You know, no guys beat us at the last minute. And, you know, my mindset was I didn't want that, you know, to happen again. So that was my mindset, you know. Uh, you know, my, my coach, he, he he apologized to me, you know, after just some, some hours after the game because he didn't know, 
he said he didn't know, but I, I told him I didn't really care. You know, I didn't. I don't really care about records. You know, records are meant to be broken. You know, and 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 I, and I stand by that. That's actually a terrific perspective, you know, because, uh, you know, to not even know that that was going on in the moment, just to come on out knowing that it was such a tremendous performance, a W. Obviously, you said it was two undefeated teams going at it early in the action of the season. So really one of the, again, proudest moments as a fan, as a football fan, because everybody seemed to notice, you know, that Jared Patterson really is nationally here. So if we can go back a little further now, Jared, before the University of Buffalo, obviously there was a recruitment process. Could you bring us back to, how, you know, what led to the decision for you to go up to University of Buffalo, basically knowing that this was a program that wasn't probably up to where some other of the competitors for you were? Yeah, so it was kind of funny because I didn't I didn't have no no big offers, you know. That was my that was my twin brother James. Uh I was really under recruited, you know. You know, you name it, you know, I heard, you know, ACC, Big Ten, Big Twelve, SEC, you name it, you know, all the coaches came in and just thought I wasn't, you know, uh they always said I was a good player, but you know, I wasn't big enough to, you know, play in their program. So I didn't have no power five offers. You know, I had, you know, some Mac offers already, you know, like Kent State was my very first offer, you know, then Buffalo, you know, then I got Toledo, then I got, you know, Eastern Michigan eventually, then and, and Robin Morris, and that was really it. You know, I didn't I didn't have no, you know, I wasn't a big time recruit. You know, that you know, that was my brother, like I said, and you know, Buffalo offered him early and Buffalo like offered me, you know, like kind of late, you know, in my junior season. And I kind of, you know, me and my brothers kind of looked at each other and, you know, it was like, man, we can see, you know, ourselves being successful there. You know, when we visited, you know, it felt like home. And we also had a, a, a coach on our high school staff, you know, Justin Winters, Buffalo alum. He played in, he played at Buffalo in, you know, 08, you know, when they won the MAC championship. And it's just crazy how this thing, you know, this thing, how this uh, thing we call life works, you know. You know, I, I've, I've met Khalil Mack before. You know, I met him when he was in, he was going ahead into the draft. You know, I met James Starks. You know, I met Brandon Oliver. All close with those guys to this day. It's just crazy how you know it works. You know, and it's just been a blessing. You know, and and I feel like that's one of the best decisions. You know, me and my family made. You know, to attend the University at Buffalo. I love hearing that. You know, you mentioned that James Sparks, and he he actually, you know, I could be mistaken, but I believe he's the only University of Buffalo player to score a touchdown in a Super Bowl uh, when he was with the Packers back, uh, you know, some years ago. So it really is just terrific to see the growth of this program and to hear your story. Going on the process with a brother must have been fantastic. So you guys are mid-Atlantic guys. So when you got on up to Buffalo, obviously it's very it's lovely there in the late summer, early fall. But when November hit, what was that first feeling of that lake effect snow for you guys? Uh, you know, it was definitely, you know, the wind and, and the winters up here, get, it gets, you know, gets crazy. But you get used to it after a while. You know, Maryland, you know, in Maryland, where I'm from, you know, we have all types of seasons, you know, winter, spring, you know, summer. So it wasn't really a, a hard transition for us, you know, so it wasn't too bad. Any fun winterized story? I mean, I feel like a lot of us Buffalo guys and gals, you know, we have a story that the snow affected us in some weird way, in some way, shape, or form. Anything uh, knock you off your football or regular uh, normal routine? Uh, not really. You know, just even before we had the indoor, you know, just spring ball, sometimes we have to practice, in, you know, in the snow. That was, you know, it was fun more than anything. It wasn't didn't really knock me off, but, you know, it, that just stuff like that. I, like I said, I was kind of, me and my brother, we, we were kind of used to it, you know, just walking, walking, walking to class, you know, with, with our boots and, you know, being bundled up. And we was kind of, you know, kind of adjusted to it real quick. It was, it was the norm around there, you know, time, it, time it hit, you know, January, February, March, and, you know, all, all through that time. So. Bringing back a lot of fun and cold memories, got to tell you there, Jared. And going back to, you know, the running style of, of, you know, you in high school and now through Buffalo, did you emulate any professional running back, any group of running backs? Who do you say you uh, model the game after? Um, I don't say I, I model my, uh, you know, game after anyone because I, you know, want to be, you know, myself. But, you know, I can, I can, I can say I can, you know, I can, take some things from, you know, some some backs and some backs that I'm similar to, you know, that that are gone before me that had, you know, great success in the NFL, like, you know, Ray Rice, you know, Darren Sproles, 
you know, uh, Barry Sanders, you know, th those, you know, those undersized backs, you know, even, even, uh, you know, Clyde, the, the, the rookie Clyde Edwards, you know, from, from LSU that plays with the Chiefs, just stuff like that, you know, you know, I study all, all the great running backs and, you know, just watch, you know, what they do and what, what things I can, I can, uh, you know, take from their game and what things I do different. So that's, that's how I really, uh, approach that. You named a couple of great backs. You named one of the most, most elusive and enjoyable backs to watch ever in Barry Sanders. And you had some runs this season, you know, that obviously were Barry Sanders-esque. And one of the things that I noticed about your game that I love the most, I'm a stickler for fundamentals. You know, I love when things are done proper. And I, the way that you, you hold the ball, I feel like it's very consistent. You hold the ball finger point on ball. And not a lot of running backs do that consistently. You kind of see them chugging with their arms with the ball and that creates turnovers. So was that anything that was instilled in you earlier? Or is that just a natural way you run? Yeah, definitely, uh, you know, still in me early. And that, you know, even that, you know, uh, Buffalo, you know, definitely, you know, as a running back, you know, ball security is very important, you know, you know. So that that's it was really instilled to me at a, at a young age and even when I got to Buffalo. And to put it into perspective, you know, what you were able to do statistically your freshman year, you know, you started your career off with 1,000 yards, then you went to 1,700 yards, just a, a yard under 1,800 yards. And this season, only six games, 7.6 yards per carry, 1,072 yards, and 19 touchdowns. So that was a Heisman candidacy campaign. What was it like representing UB as a Heisman candidate? Oh, it was good. You know, like it was, it was good. You know, for the short, you know, period of time we had, the short amount of games we had. You know, getting, getting, you know, Heisman, you know, hypes and and stuff like that. It was, it was definitely, you know, to uh, honor and be in, you know, the category. You know, obviously didn't wasn't the way I wanted to finish. You know, if I feel like it was a regular season, it, it'll be a little different. But I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and you know grateful. You know, I, I had the. The season I had and, and, you know, I could, you know, play with my teammates and, you know, really, you know, really just go out with a bang. And I can always say, you know, I left uh, I've, I left the impact on that program. Well, 100 percent. That's easy. Anyone could say that. Was there a moment from this season? If it's the Kent State game, that's the easy way out. But uh, if there was another moment throughout the year where your teammates said you could kind of put that staple as the moment of 2020, kind of that silver lining on a crazy year. What would it be, Jared? Uh, just really, just I have to feel like just the whole, whole, just the whole season. You know, it was just a crazy year. You know, getting getting tested every day. It was really grind. You know, you really had to, you know, be accountable. Keep your team, keep your team. season you know you really had to just be accountable and it was it was like I said it was a grind a lot of guys were you know drained because you know they, they didn't know when they was going to see their families for for a good minute and, and things like that so I think just the whole season it was a grind for, for sure well said and you know speaking of that grind you know it, it, it's football so it really never stops and I'm sure you have plenty of things going on in your preparation for whatever the combine will hold whether there's virtual live all these components how are you preparing right now whether it's mental physical in your training what is uh your process going on into really a, a huge two months for prospects yeah i'm just just really working out you know just working out getting ready you know for my pro day which is you know march 18th up at university of buffalo and and that's my main focus right now and is there anything that is uh, that you might know is completely changed in the process? Is it going to be a little normal, or is this going to just kind of be a winging it kind of thing and seeing how everything goes from a day by day or week to week process? Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be a different process, you know, in 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 the year just because the pandemic and stuff like that. But you know, like I said, you just got to take it day by day and just take it one day at a time, really, and control what you can control. That's actually a perfect uh, way to say things. Control what you can control. I hear the draft is that, you know, it's like a living organism. Changes all the time. So, obviously, the best of luck in the draft to you. Now, to get to some fun, you know, Buffalo. Three years up in Buffalo. I really hope you chose a chicken wing spot. Are you a Duff guy? Are you an anchor bar guy? Are you going to give me another diamond in the rough that we don't even know about? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's crazy. You don't even know about Elmo's. Elmo's is definitely a uh, for wings for sure, hands down. Elmo's, hands see, down, I, probably, probably Elmo's or or Bar. Yeah, yeah, Elmo's or either Bar Bill. Okay, okay. Do is just pizza still around there? Uh, I don't. I I don't have. I haven't been, but I'm pretty sure that's probably one. But I, I, I haven't been. Elmo's. I love it. I love it. You went off book with the uh, either ankle bar or dust. It's a diamond in the rough. And you know what? One last question. Blue cheese or do you even dare to do ranch? Oh, man. Buffalo turn me, turn me, you know, turn me around. I'm definitely a blue cheese guy now Atta for guy. sure. A hundred percent. You can't even bring ranch in a spot with a couple of people from Buffalo with the wings out there. It's blue cheese or bust. Am I right? Yeah, no, nah, you're definitely right about that. 100%. So I'll tell you what, we'll get out of here, Jarrett, with a way to kind of give us that, you know, 30 second pitch of, you know, what you're up to these days, what makes you kind of what, you know, really could be, you know, one of the steals at running back when we get to, uh, you know, within the draft process. You know, really just right now, you know, preparing for, more, preparing for, you know, my pro day, like I said, you know, down, down here and, you know, in Avatar, Florida, you know, uh, and really, man, it just I, I think, you know, with the combine, you know, combine not happening in, in Indy and stuff like that, definitely that's a a bummer for sure. But, you know, I'm I'm kinda I'm kinda I'm kinda I'm kinda glad because, you know, scouts are gonna have to do their jobs. They're gonna have to, you know, watch watch the tape and not get hyped over over a guy that, you know, runs fast or benches 225 fast, you know. And I'm uh, just really looking forward to this process. I think, you know, where where, where things are looking and, and headed, I think, you know, uh, it's looking good. And, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, if I get drafted or, you know, undrafted, you know, uh, my mindset is it's not how you get in, but it's how you stay in. That's actually one of the best things I've heard. You know, it's almost kind of like a mantra. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. You know, in different sports, it's really kind of a mindset that how you go through things. And that sounds like you got everything ready to roll. And, you know, from one Buffalo Bull to another Buffalo Bull, I wish you the best of luck, Jarrett. And I really, truly appreciate you coming on, spending some time. And if there's anything you else uh, that you're doing other than football these days, or if there's any other thing you could lead us out with uh, what's going on in uh, 26's world. Now that, that's really it. You know, I'm just, you know, grinding right now. That's the best thing to hear. So Jarrett Patterson, NFL prospect, University at Buffalo Bull. Thank you so much, sir. Have a terrific weekend. Thank you for having me. Anytime, Jarrett.